In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to apply this ghost effect to different items in your shot and it's quite a simple effect using mainly roto brushing and some free tools within After Effects. Now the cool thing about this effect is once we create the object to be the sort of glassy you can see that the environment is reflecting within it so it helps us sell the shot even more. So without further ado let's get into it. This is the shot that I'm going to be working with which is quite a complex shot but you'll see that the roto brush is handling it quite well. So let's go ahead and select our clip select our rotor brush, double click it, and we're gonna start drawing a mask here around our skateboard. Now, you do wanna make sure your first frame is as accurate as possible so that the brush can identify what you're trying to isolate and that'll make things easier for the both of you. And now you're just gonna have to go frame by frame and just make sure everything is attached and accordingly to your mask. Obviously, I'm going to fast forward here, but you get the idea. Alright, so this took me just under two minutes. As you can see, the result is quite amazing. And once you're done with the masking, just go ahead and click on freeze and wait for this to finish. Now, once that is ready, you're basically done with the complex part of this tutorial. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate this layer. I'll name this one background. Let's drop it below and delete the brush effect. Now I'll create a new adjustment layer for our main effect. We can name this displace and we'll add a displacement map to it. Now with this effect, we're basically displacing the frame. So if I go ahead and under my track mat, select the skate layer, it's gonna keep the boundaries within inside the skate. So let's just get rid of the colors here of the skate. So I'll just adjust some of the settings and you can see the leg here is sort of reflecting, which is quite cool. And once you've adjusted some of the settings, you might get some black edges here and that is because it's displacing out of frame. So if we select wrap pixels around, it's gonna create a wrap around our frame and that sort of fixes our problem. Now, what I don't like about this is our edges here are kind of sharp. So what I like to add is a compound blur and this blur in particular makes it look kind of frosty. So if I set this to free, you can see we're getting this sort of a frosty effect here. I don't know, something about compound blur makes it look much nicer. So I'll be going with it. Next, I wanna add a bit of a chromatic effect here. So I can use an effect called Quick Chromatic Aberration, which is actually a free plugin from the same guys who made the Deep Glow plugin. So why not get it, right? And let's set this to maybe free. And this just gives us a bit of this chromatic aberration here inside our skate. And you can already see the result here. Now, what I've done in the beginning is I actually have a saber layer that is tracked on our skate. And to do so, I'm gonna isolate our skate layer here for a second. If we go to the layer auto trace, we can select the work area and set the channel to alpha. And since the skate is rotoscoped, it's basically gonna create a mask around it. And once we hit OK, it's gonna track the mask throughout the work area. And hopefully this doesn't crash. If your scene is pretty complex, this might take a few seconds, so I'm just gonna wait a bit. So this basically created a mask around our object and throughout the scene. So the only issue here is you can find masks like this one, which are only getting used on this frame. So what you're gonna need to do is manually adjust them. So let's go one frame backwards here, and we're just gonna drag this off frame here, copy the keyframe and paste it after the active one. And you're just gonna have to manually adjust any other mask that you might have in the scene that's causing that. Once you're done, just go ahead and create a new solid. We can name this Saber. And I'll hit M to bring up the mask, copy them and paste them onto my Saber layer. Let's go ahead and hide this. Add the Saber effect and we can change the core type to layer mask and I'll set it to additive. And now we've got the Saber effect applied to our skateboard with the mask tracked around it. And this is obviously the saber effect, so you can go ahead and create your own type of look here. Basically up to you. And once you're done with the composition, I do recommend pre-rendering it and applying a motion blur. Now, if you have some motion blur plugin, that is great. But if you don't, there's actually a built-in pixel motion blur, which does a pretty good job, but it's quite heavy and might take you some time. But yeah, this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.